Before arriving in the United States uh, in 1986, the Chinese composer Tan Dun was already known in China as a spokesman of the new wave of music after the Cultural Revolution. With a prophetic outpouring of works in standard Western genres, for example, symphony or string quartet, and for Chinese instruments, he wrote himself into the present. Tan Dun took up a scholarship to Columbia University in New York, and since then, he has lived mostly in New York, composing works for standard orchestra and an opera on the spiritual journey of Marco Polo. On Taoism was one of the last works he composed before leaving the Central Conservatory in Peking, Beijing. And it suggests how much his discovery of the present, of his own present, was also a rediscovery of the distant past. Death in terrorist tradition, while requiring respect and grief, is at the same time honored, honored as a moment of release into materials for new births. On Taoism, introduces Tandun's continuing concerns with having orchestral musicians vocalize, singing that means with, singing without words, vocalize, while pointing them also towards, towards Chinese playing techniques, for example, microtonal glissandos and other inflections, rough and breathless sounds for woodwinds, a wide range of string effects. And with introducing Chinese scales and Chinese percussion, all as means to open up the Western orchestra. Let's see a please example number six, take six, that he intends to create a music between cultures. He therefore implied more than simply an additive and arbitrary mixture of exotic sounds of, of different musical idioms. Tandun finds a meta level of dialogue within ethnic patterns. Densely interwoven sound structures are oriented by the structural results of ethnic music rather than by this music's sonorous skin or surface. Below the surface of Tandun's music is something more substantial than a simple multicultural eclecticism. His music communicates the possibilities as well as the limits of blending musical languages into one another, while at the same time exposing the limitations of an only academical or ethnomusicological kind of world music. His meaningful game with different musical styles especially with Chinese and Western idioms, shows an ironic distance as well as an affinity. <coughs> New York's avant-garde DJ Spooky, as we have seen, creates musical collages by using the sampling technique. He writes in the booklet of his CD album, Necropolis, the dialogue project, I quote, I, I quote DJ Spooky, the mix, a fusion of different meanings, whose previous connotations have been corralled into a space where they are so placed that differences in time, space, and culture are collapsed within the immediate realm of the teleological present. The word phonograph simply means writing sound. See the record as a device that allows the mnemonic, mnemonic construction of a parallel space where all is flux and the only constant is change. In a prismatic fashion, through the union of form and content, the DJ reflects meaning from the dense local of culture and places the rays of meaning in a rhizomatic fashion, back in their original local, the human mind. This reflection of meaning leads one to the singular of the plural and in the process opens the egocentric self to the spaces of the multiple where all things are linked. And now I would like to present another example of DJ Spooky. It's um, from this. Uh, <coughs> in this paper, I have tried to present to you some thoughts on the ways of creating a musical globalization, a new intercultural musical language in the age of media, which began around the end of the 19th century and has grown to a digital world. <coughs> As you have seen, musical globalization doesn't mean only an eclectic exoticism, not only an amusing game with exotic sounds. It also means the synthesis of musical collages in a more compositorial sense, like in the work of Tandun or in the mixes of DJ Spooky. The tension between finding and inventing, between objet trouvé 
and composition characterizes the aesthetic value of musical globalization. Musical globalization poses a challenge to musicians of the 21st century to free their minds from historically and culturally determined musical thought. But an intercultural musical dialogue can only be meaningful if both a common basis and a consciousness of cultural difference are present. So let's build a musical future of media sounds where cultural borders can be crossed while still allowing for the affirmation of cultural difference. Thank you. So we can discuss now. Perhaps we have some yeah, impressions or statements, questions. Actually, um, I'm just kind of wondering. Um, Thank you. For how do you think the use of words in this kind of music may come up? I mean, it's not like the traditional, we have a verse, we have a chorus, we have a verse, we have a chorus. What, how do you see words going to be playing into this? And do you think love songs can be part of all of this? Or that's what most songs seem to be about, almost. Do mm-hmm. you understand my question? Um, yeah, um, words um, uh, in, in poetry, for example. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, because as it is, this music you, doesn't have... You have to translate. Yeah. But in music, yeah. um, there, there, there comes another context. So, so I think it's, it's much easier to, um, um, to, to, to become, um, uh, to have a, yeah, a kind of understanding in this musical world. Mm-hmm. And for, for music, it's uh, much easier to be um, understand in Asia or Europe or the United States. So um, it's, it's also easier for the words uh, to be in a musical context. <coughs> what didn't you just say before with the John Cage piece that he was trying to make uh, something that didn't need translation? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, and that's also happening in visual culture. I and mean, mm-hmm. people who are doing things on the internet that need to be understood all over the world, mm-hmm. you know, we're starting to translate everything so that anyone can understand because you're speaking through. Mm-hmm. Images instead of and, text. And, and, and the speaking in the John Cage uh, uh, piece uh, was um, like music. Yes, yeah, so was the sound. So the sound of the voice <laughs> and, uh, and the singing. Uh, um, yeah. And any vocals would just be in the context of sound anyway, of sound impressions anyway, because with the concept of world music, people would be listening to it all around the world. So other than you know, for the for the people who speak the language that the text happens to you know, occur in, it would just be another, uh, just be more noise, but mm-hmm. sound. Mm-hmm. But could this then spawn a universal language? You know, like actual words, you know, like some kind of sound word for book and mm-hmm. eye and hair mm-hmm. through this kind of medium. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I'm sure that music has a potential to be a universal language. Mm-hmm. And uh, in this phenomenon of, of musical globalization and musical fusion, I try to show that it's important um, how you use the differences, mm-hmm. because there are differences mm-hmm. between the musical cultures. And using it in, a, in an only eclectic manner, I, th- I think it's not uh, uh, such a good way, like this, um, this Australian group, uh, for example, mm-hmm. using uh, their, their own culture in a uh, very superficial way. 